Well, they finally get a champagne celebration at City Field, right? Years uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, the ballpark. Yeah, it finally good. happens. And Francisco Lindor, on a day that was filled with such frustration for the Mets, it ends with Edwin Diaz walking a couple, but coming back with a couple of strikeouts, including Schwarber at the end. And the Mets get to celebrate a clincher at City Field for the first time since the ballpark opened. Congratulations to the Mets. But what a moment for Francisco Lindor in a year that's been filled with great moments for him. He adds a postseason Grand Slam, the second postseason Grand Slam of his career. He had one for Cleveland in 2017 against the Yankees, but this one puts the Mets over the top. On a day that was filled with frustration up until that point, all the runners left on base, but Lindor would not allow that to hold. Yeah, and you've heard Brandon and Lindor talk about keep pressing on the dam, keep pressing on the dam, and finally get that dam to break. Wasn't sure it was going to happen today. They had opportunities early on. They had Ranger Suarez on the ropes a couple of different times, weren't able to break through, and you saw the way they manufactured a run. That inning could have gotten away from Quintana, but he battled, and you can't say enough about Quintana keeping him right there. David Peterson being that stopgap, and he's been so good uh, in the postseason at the end of the regular season. And then Edwin Diaz coming in there. Looked like he was pitching a little timidly at first, the first couple of batters ends up walking guys, not really having the command. But then, as he does sometimes, and he pitches, and I'm not going to say he was angry at the time, but maybe a little more intent. And with that intention, the fastball ramped up a little bit. The location uh, became a little bit more, uh, you know, I I within his grasp. And it's great to watch Francisco right now celebrating. And it was great to watch Edwin finish it off against the guy, Kyle Schwarber, who's had his number. I mean, he Edwin has had Schwarber's number. He's never been able to touch him, but it only takes one mistake for that guy to do some damage. Edwin made the, uh, got the best of it. It was great to see right there Francisco Lindor on the field celebrating his fourth year in a Mets uniform. Finally has this team go to the championship series. So the Mets trailed this game. It was 1-0 going to the bottom of the, sixth, bottom of the sixth inning. They had so many chances. And then Lindor meets the moment. Uh, don't forget, he helped get them to the postseason with the big home run against the Braves. And he does it again tonight. But what is it, Todd, about Lindor that has allowed him through this stretch drive to, to meet the moment so consistently? Gary and I were talking about the fact that Francisco has just been really calm, almost a little bit zen. Even in his biggest moments, you'd normally see him fist pump. He doesn't really bat toss, but you'd see him fist pump. Right now, look at how calm he is. He still knows that there's more work to get be done. They had to finish this out to be able to go and celebrate. He wasn't going to have that premature celebration and have it unfold. He got to see them celebrate a little bit after the final out was made, but I think that calm, that zen, if you will, with Lindor has been something we've seen now for a couple of months. It's not just right now. It's in big moments when he knows that everybody's looking at him and he knows that the, uh, the real pressure is on the guy 60 feet away and he takes that, harnesses it, and does some great things at the plate. He's turned into baseball's version of Barry Sanders. <laughs> he gets the big hit and he just hands the ball to the ref. I mean, he did it in Atlanta when he hit the huge home run in the ninth inning. No reaction, just circled the bases. He said his back was hurting. I don't know if his back is still hurting or if he's just found another level of calm. But this is the evolution of a player who we saw was jittery when he first got to New York, had a rough first six weeks this year, but he has turned into the consummate leader of this team, and he put this team on its back with one big swing to take him to the National League Championship Series. What a moment for Lindor, the Mets' second ever postseason Grand Slam. Or maybe the third, depending if you count Robin Ventura. <laughs> Robin's Grand watching, Slam. so he's saying there was three. three yeah. Edgardo Alfonso had the first one against Arizona in that same year in 1999. And now 25 years later, it's Francisco Lindor with a Grand Slam to put the Mets over the top. What a moment for the Mets. And what a moment for Francis. Listen, we had spoken throughout this series about the fact that Lindor had big at bats and big hits and big walks, but he was not the headliner so far in this series until tonight. As we get a look at numbers here, Francisco Lindor high leverage situations during the regular season and the the numbers really tell the story. The OPS of 926, the batting average just under 310. So he's been doing it all season long. Again, he got off to the slow start this year. The team meeting at the end of May 
And then the manager puts him into the leadoff spot. And really, in so many ways, I think that changed the course of where this team was headed. Yeah, I mean, it was co it was not coincidental, but it was all timed around the same time as you had the glove toss, you had the team meeting, you had Iglesias, and then you have the change in the lineup all happening around that same time. And this team took that all and encompassed uh, what was kind of a, hey, nobody has any faith in us. Let's have faith in ourselves. And that turnaround has been a four-month turnaround that has continued to just continue to uh, progress, make great moments, but the work's never done. Even in a game like tonight, they had opportunities. They couldn't crack it. You've got to give credit to the guys that led to that Lindor Grand Slam. J.D. Martinez coming through with a base hit, a couple of walks in that inning. And then, uh, you know, he gets up there with a chance to do, be the big guy and get the, uh, the job done at a time where they weren't able to catch in nice calm presence at the plate and a great swing that he puts on an Estevez pitch and we're talking about it now Gary we've spoken so much about when was that big moment that city field magical moment going to happen and I think listening to Pete Alonzo right right there it's happening right now, Gare. Well, I mean, the Mets certainly had moments in 2015 when they made their run to the World Series. We've talked about those. But uh, this is a new chapter in Mets history. And, and it's a new page with a new front office and a new manager and a team that has come together after a slow start to take this league by storm. I mean, this has been the best team in baseball over the last four and a half months. And they just keep on proving it anew. Yes, it took them an extra day of the season just to get into the postseason. But if we've seen in recent Recent years with the Braves three years ago and with the Phillies two years ago and with the Diamondbacks last year if you can get on a run in October there's no telling what might happen and this team and this franchise right now is writing new chapters in Mets history and today was a major step forward they get to celebrate a series victory at City Field they get a few days to get their breath and then they move on go to the West Coast and start writing a new chapter.